Dynamic Split Screen is new to Pinnacle Studio. You can easily create a split screen video to play multiple video clips in a preset template, or create your own template with split screens that you can use again and again across different projects. Custom templates can now include 3D motions to introduce frames and create dynamic changes. Let me show you how to make this in Pinnacle Studio. To create a new split screen template, just click the split screen template creator. Split screens are composed of shapes that you can create within the editor. We can add shapes of any size, and each one of these can be filled with video or image clips. In this example, I need to create three shapes by adding two vertical lines from the top to the bottom of the split screen creator. But be aware you can create rectangles, circles, and a host of other shapes, so you're only really limited by your own creativity when it comes to split screens. The positions of these lines aren't super important at present, as we will have full control over the position of these shapes after they've been created, and I'll be keyframing the position of these lines shortly. For my project though, I do want them to be completely vertical throughout, so I'm going to make sure the rotation is set to minus 90 for each of these lines. So now I have three shapes within the split screen. Next, I just add my media to each shape. I'm going to add this clip of a pool party to the middle shape, and then I'm going to add a second clip to both the outer shapes, numbers 1 and 3. These two video clips are actually different angles of the same content, a bunch of guys jumping into a swimming pool and splashing the girls. I want the clip that is present in the outer two shapes of the split screen to dynamically move across the split screen, so partially showing both clips within the same video section to create an effect of watching both clips at the same time through vertical blinds. To control the movement of a shape, we just click the shape to select it. And then we can move it where we like. Next, you'll see on the bottom of the template creator screen that there is already a keyframe at the start. I'll skip ahead two seconds and drag the line to a new position. Then I'll do the same for the second dividing line. I can continue doing this for the length of the clip, skip ahead to 4 seconds and create new positions for the lines, and a keyframe will be created at each edit point. I want the gap between the two lines to be variable to create an interesting dynamic effect, and I'll keep in mind that I want as many of the subjects in both video clips to be on screen at any one time, so it's best in this case to cover up areas of either shot where not much is going on. So once I've also done this at 6 seconds and 8 seconds and at the end of the clip, I can review my split screen and make any amendments if I need to. Of course, the position of your shapes is not the only aspect that can be keyframed. We can keyframe all parameters that we have on the right-hand panel here, including the size of the shape, its rotation, and even the width and color of the shape's border. The video clip can also be adjusted from within the split screen template creator if required. Just click the clip's thumbnail between the split screen and the timeline and you'll see that we could keyframe the video clip's position, size, rotation and opacity. When you're editing a video clip's parameters, the clip will become partially transparent so you can see how it interacts with the other clips you've added to your split screen. This will help you adjust, for example, the size of the video clip so you can see right away if you've made the clip too small. For example, we can see the black lines created here, which we don't want. Once we're complete, we can click OK to insert the finished split screen into our project, or we can click Save As to save the current split screen as a template that we can use again in the future. Please note, if you've added any video clips to your split screen template, they will be saved with the template. To remove clips, right-click the clip's thumbnail and then select Remove Media. I'll remove all three clips and I'll show you how to add media to an existing template shortly. Then I can go ahead and click OK. So now I am presented with a sub-movie within my existing project in Pinnacle Studio, which is set to the template that I just created. I can drag and drop clips from my project bin to each of the tracks within the sub-movie. Note, I can add different clips from the ones I was creating the template with, so you can see that the template can be used with any video or image clips that you want, once it has been created. And then, once I'm finished, I just click OK to exit the sub-editor and collapse the split-screen elements onto a single track in my timeline. 
we can also use 3D elements to make split screens even more dynamic. In fact, we can use them to create our own custom animations, just like this one. Let's start a new split screen from the template creator. I'll drag this clip of the beach at sunset onto the default shape 1 position, and then create a new shape. I'll create a rectangle for this one. And I'll drag this campfire clip in here. When creating shapes rather than lines as our split screen delineators, we can see we have a couple of extra controls, swivel and tilt. Swivel rotates the shape vertically along what we call the z-axis, along with the associated video clip, whilst tilt rotates it horizontally. I want the first clip to play full screen and then the second clip to swivel and tilt, whilst also moving position from the left-hand edge of the screen to the center, and whilst doing so, scaling up so that it completely covers the first clip, so like a custom transition. First, I'll keyframe the point at which I want the second clip to have completed its transition. We'll go for somewhere around the seven second mark. Now I'll jump back about two seconds and set the tilt to around minus 90. and the swivel to just under minus 90 as well. Then I'll just slide the horizontal position until the clip is completely off screen. Next, I'll skip ahead to the first keyframe I made at seven seconds by using the next keyframe button. And now I'll change the size to 100 so that the clip completely fills the screen. I'll also set the position to zero on both the horizontal and vertical position controls so that the clip is centered. This is great, but we can see that the border is still showing. There's a couple of ways we can fix this. I can keyframe the border width to be zero from this point onwards. And then, just to make sure, I can set the size control to be 101%. Now we just need to copy the keyframe at five seconds in to the start of our timeline. And then, once we hit OK, or Save As if we want to use this transition again in future, and then click OK in the sub-movie as well, we'll now be able to see the finished split screen in our project. Hopefully, this should give you some great ideas on how to bring your split screen ideas into reality. Happy editing!